So, if you can look at progress, we have a first long step. If you can look at progress, if you can see this, then you have to do a type of contact now. But, which is very less compliant among Indian uh, scenario. So when we like uh, combine uh, this collagen cross-linking with uh, triple-guided uh, uh, refractive corrections along with the regularization of the cornea, it results in flat, it flattens the cone peak resulting in flatter and broader cone thereby redistributing the biomechanical uh, strength. So CXL will have an additive effect on this. So, resulting for a patient who is having best vision with uh, rigid contact lens, will can accept better vision with only spectacles. So, this is usually done uh, with a refractive coordinated system. I have this system and there are many other uh, platforms uh, to conduct this. But one uh, specific thing about this uh, refractive coordinated system supported by Zeiss is highly predictable values can be attained in post-operative period. Initially, for all keratoconus patients, we see for the progression. If it is progressing, then we will uh, take him for the study and he will undergo all uh, routine clinical examination and topography followed by uh, the complete uh, manifest refraction has to be known. A good refraction is uh, a key for this success. Followed by, we get an imaging by atlas topographer. This is actually placido based uh, imaging which takes anterior sagittal curvature into the picture and the same data will be transferred to CRS master. This is all linked uh, by one another. So in CRS master, this is a main workstation which uh, here we have to enter pachymetry values and a manifest diffraction and optical zone. Here we can interplay between 5.5 uh, to 6.5 mm depending on the corneal uh, thickness and we have to choose a topography treatment. When we actually do that, it actually shows our ablation pattern exactly focusing on uh, our uh, cone. So th that can be further uh, confirmed by like a 3D representation uh, CRS master provides it. So when you actually see there is so much of irregularity on the cornea, which can be tackled uh, like a sure shot. So followed by that, uh, we transfer the data to MEL90 machine. In MEL90, we do a regular uh, PRK for it. Uh, it's followed by like uh, alcohol epithelectomy followed by a PRK. The normal PRK takes at least uh, two seconds for every adapter. That's one of the fastest laser available that is MEL90. But here it takes about 18 to 20 seconds for every treatment because here when you see the ablation pattern, initially it treats cylinder, then it causes regularization of the cornea. Then uh, we expose it to mitomycin C. Our standard protocol is about 120 seconds irrespective of the power treated. Then uh, after thorough wash, uh, we will uh, do accelerated collagen cross-linking. How is our study different from the existed one? Uh, so like whatever uh, the protocol which has been uh, like published in the literature, they say like uh, conventional uh, C3R will be done after topogated treatment and they are considered thickness of up to 50 microns of ablation. But here we do usually 80 to 100 microns then which can be con uh, later on confirmed objectively because we need some objective evidence if you remember the previous slide where there was so much of cone and irregularity which we have totally flattened with our treatment so this needs to be like represented by a topography again when you actually see there's a topography flattening of almost like 4.5 diopter k max and astigmatism has been treated for up to 2.2 diopters this is actually a two-year follow-up so with this uh, background, uh, we did a similar study in about uh, 68 eyes, uh, follow up of about uh, 2 to 3 years and uh, none of our patients have progressed and all are stable. The best thing is about like more than 50% of the patients when you see it gained 3 or more lines just with the spectacles and uh, more than 2 lines in 25% of the patients. And uh, there is a constant uh, like stabilization or the flattening effect which has been persisted even after 3 years. So with this uh, background, uh, we would like to give certain recommendations in the management of um, progressive keratoconus, especially with a clear central cornea and ideally a central cone and expected corneal thickness. Uh, with our study, it was only 350 microns. Literature says it is 450, but even then we can consider up to 350 microns. We have a larger sample size and uh, follow up of about three years now. And optical zone, we usually interplay between 5.5 to 6.5 millimeter. That depends 
on your thickness residual bed thickness and target refraction even though we cannot correct complete emetropic correction but we should never target for uh, hyperopia thank you so so doctor very nice uh, presentation what uh, basically we have been doing till now we have never ablated more than 50 microns yeah, yeah. and you are showing 80 microns which is too much for yeah. a keratoconus patient where you know that even after cross linking they will the cornea will shrink and they will lose the thickness True. so what is the starting factor yeah. now, what do you uh, think like suppose do you correct the sphere also because we are talking not only we always tell the patients that it is not to remove your glasses it is to make the cornea more more uh, uh, smooth to True. remove the so yeah. how do you start the patient ma'am uh, basically th there is a fear in all our surgeons uh, whether we should do up to 80 microns that is one thing and even it's there in ocular tumors also surface tumors whether we have to give topical therapy or we have to surgically excise uh, the same fear is there here also we don't know whether it'll progress or not and uh, uh, what we found out a weaker thicker cornea is not going to help us a thinner stronger cornea is better than a weaker thicker cornea and uh, all that we need is our follow up results which is like more than actually 4 years now and none of them have progressed and we do advise them systemic serum ig level estimation and all because most of these patients they have irb being if you yes. advise like uh, modifiable factors in a patient this is definitely going to help and second question is like do i treat spherical or cylinder my priority is always to treat the cylinder so they'll better accepted with the spectacles usually when you see keratoconus they'll be like minus 8 minus 6 cylinder even though we cannot correct full but we do up to like 4 to 5 cylinder can be corrected now and also your the patient that you showed the thickness at the starting was only 429 microns yes. which and to start with is very less yeah. and over that you ablated 80 microns it is too dangerous uh, i would say <laughs> i don't know what other this was a say. index case actually we tried and after a proper counseling patient explaining him the risk factor and he was a intern so he could understand the benefits also and for our uh, lucky thing is not progress is doing very well actually he has 6 9 now the one thing about keratoconus patients even in an advanced keratoconus patient when they have two uh, segments of i cylinder that itself acts as a pinhole for them Yes. So when you actually see patients of keratoconus, sometimes they will reach six six, yes. but they do have like minus six, minus ten cylinder. Yes, yes. And that's the thing. And also, why are you using alcohol when you are you can go for the transepithelial PRK? I mean, uh, or PTK we, mode. Yeah, uh, yeah. When we see the like surface of the keratoconic cornea, it is not regular. Yes. So transepithelial, we might have to do epithelial mapping. we cannot ablate it properly if we if i keep a 50 micron setting in transepithelial it will ablate part of the stroma also because especially over the cone epithelium will be thinner, thinner yes. and it's thicker in the periphery so we cannot do that okay thank you any other sir thank you so